Hello and welcome to this Unreal Fest presentation. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Matt Workman and the name of my presentation is Work From Home Virtual Production. And I'm gonna be talking about how I built my own DIY virtual production studio in my house and the type of work that I'm doing today. So a little background about me. For 10 years, I worked in New York City as a live action cinematographer, primarily working on commercials and music videos. And what we can see here is that I'm on the bottom left of the screen there and I'm operating a camera remote head and I'm viewing the image right there. This is a very typical shoot that I would be part of. And my specialty was that I was doing a lot of previs work, uh, specifically in Maya. And I was working on really technical jobs with VFX companies and they were already working with previs. So I really wanted to be able to communicate myself. So I started to get into the fray, so to speak. Uh, this next image here is from a shoot that I did that was using the Techno Dolly, which is a motion control crane here on a White Psych Studio. And this is the technical previs, and I was working with the mill, and they were kind enough to give me their Techno Dolly IK rig, and that's how I was planning for this particular shoot. After the planning, the fun part for me anyway is executing it in the real world, so we have to program the actual crane and loosely follow the previs, just making sure that we're getting the right uh, boards across and the right frames. But on a real shoot, we always have a little bit of uh, things changing. And so this is the primary type of work I did as a DP. And this is how I got introduced to working in 3D as well. So that was how I got introduced to 3D and combining it with live action cinematography. And I actually went on to start a company called Cinematography Database where I made products that did just this in Maya, in Cinema 4D, and eventually in Unreal Engine. And what I've done is I've basically combined all of my knowledge and assets and tools from the other programs and I've brought them to Unreal Engine and put them together in one standalone package that is called Cinetracer that's available now on Steam. Cinetracer has become really popular in the film industry, which I'm very proud of, and was recently featured in American Cinematographer, which is one of the biggest trade journals for cinematography. So that's how I got started in Unreal Engine. And for SIGGRAPH 2019, Epic Games called me to be the director and DP for a pretty awesome demo here that you can see that was working with LED walls and was quite literally the preview and basically a mini demo of the tech used for Mandalorian. So I spent about a month on that stage working with Lux Machina and Profile Studios and a bunch of partners that you can see here. And my mind was really blown. I'd never heard of uh, doing this sort of thing. And ever since working on this project, I have been taking the steps to be able to recreate this myself at an indie level. One, to see if it was possible. And two, just because I really like working in this kind of hybrid uh, live action and virtual system here where you can actually see final pixels through the camera. That is just amazing to me. And what really started my journey uh, into documenting building an indie virtual production studio. So earlier this year, 2020, I started to convert my basement, which luckily is pretty big, into an indie virtual production studio. And uh, what kind of led to this whole like work from home concept, this is all pre the shutdown, but what turned out to be pretty good timing. You can see the very beginnings of the studio are pretty small. It's one computer, one camera, and a very small green screen, but it, it, it kind of balloons by the end and we're able to do some pretty uh, cool stuff. So the first component to building a virtual production studio at home is some sort of camera tracking uh, technology. And the most available and the most, um, I think, robust that I would recommend most people to have is the HTC Vive Pro and Vive Tracker. This is your standard Vive Pro that you would use to play video games. But using the controller and the tracker, we're able to do really uh, high precision tracking for camera movement, which is the first step that you really need. Uh, as I found out later on, I would eventually add more base stations, and these are the sensors that basically allow you to track the controller or tracker's position. And the typical Vive Pro comes with two, and I got two more for a total of four, you guessed it. Uh, and this just gives you better coverage and you can make a bigger volume. So this is one of my first demos where I was just testing out the Vive Tracker here. And I'm not really trying to make the image look amazing, though I went for an overcast look, which is really easy to make look good in Unreal Engine. What I'm testing here is the latency 
and the responsiveness of the tracker when you have four base stations up. And it is really responsive once you set it up right. You do have to be worried about things like windows or very large uh, shiny uh, surfaces that are uh, causing reflections. This technology is based on laser tracking. And if you've ever worked with LiDAR or other laser technologies, things like reflective surfaces and mirrors and glass can really throw off the tracking. Uh, so for me, I'm in a drop ceiling uh, location with a carpet, so it's it's pretty perfect. I have almost no latency and it's very, very responsive. So after getting the virtual camera going uh, with the Vive Tracker, you know, my real goal is to combine live action and virtual worlds together. So that means putting the Vive Tracker on my camera, which at the time was a Canon C300. And the way that you get video footage into Unreal Engine, this is like the first big step for a lot of people, is that you need a capture card. And the one that I'm using is the Blackmagic Design Decklink AK Pro. And this allows me through SDI to get video in real time, live video into Unreal Engine and make it usable. And this is one of my very first tests here. No camera tracking yet, but you can see on the texture in the background of the plane that I actually have live video captured and it's now usable in Unreal Engine. So that's really the first step. And this clip continues and it's just a little preview of um, what my YouTube channel has, which is like much longer versions of what I'm showing here. These are just clips from them. So next after that, we're really looking for camera tracking, right? So we want to be able to match the real world camera with the virtual camera and put those images really right on top of each other. So in this case, you can see that I'm using a Vive controller and that works perfectly well. This is one of the very first tests with the C300, which turned out to be not the best camera for this. There's some cameras that are better than others, but this is the first time that I'm doing camera tracking and a live composite in Unreal Engine. Now this is still very shaking and I'm moving very slowly to make the demo look good, but it's the first time that I was really able to get this sort of virtual set set up going here. And it was very encouraging. And this is the first step I think for a lot of people. And then I'm also showing how this is a live set. You don't bake any of these environments, like everything is dynamic. I mean, I guess you could bake the lighting, but I tend to keep it all dynamic. And showing that I can now actually change and alter the 3D background, which is, you know, half the fun in my opinion. So after a little bit of work with the Canon C300 and some more research into it, I decided to switch cameras. I wanted to be able to do 4K. I still needed SDI. And uh, very specifically, I needed time code and the ability to gen lock uh, the engine to the camera's time code or frames, essentially. And really the best camera after doing the research uh, is the Blackmagic Design Ursa Mini 4.6K Pro G2. A lot of studios are using this and it is pretty affordable and pretty much the most affordable entry level professional camera with all the features we need to do mixed reality in Unreal Engine. That's the camera and I still very much recommend this one. Higher end cameras work as well. So this is one of the first tests that I did switching to the Blackmagic camera and we've changed a lot of things now. We have better sync. Uh, we're doing uh, gen lock to the frame. And in this little clip here, I'm basically explaining how this all works, at least to the best of my knowledge back then. And I have switched to the Vive Tracker. And you can see I'm zooming in on the SDI and talking about the different features that are needed for a camera to really work well in Unreal Engine. And we have a much better camera track and composite happening uh, in real time here. So after getting the camera tracking, we want to start to look at the keying. Uh, actually cutting out the person or the talent, the live action part, and doing that in Composure, which is built into Unreal Engine. And this is just me learning it. You can see here in this camera setup, I continue to change my camera around. But if you look at the little monitor there, you can actually see that I'm viewing the live composite now as I'm shooting it. And that's what you really want. You want to be able to see what the virtual set is so that you can operate and change the lighting uh, in an informed way. So this is one of my very first tests where I'm shooting my wife, uh, Diana Levine here, <laughs> shout out. Uh, and you can see I have the camera tracking and it's going okay, but I have a pretty bad chroma key. And that's not actually Unreal Engine's fault. That's me just learning. And I'm still happy to, to share like my work in progress. I think I'm still not executing at full uh, quality even today, but this was the first test. And for me, it was quite promising. But uh, what I'll show you here now is that in Unreal Engine 4.25, uh, they came out with a new chroma key, or I believe a color difference keyer is what it's called. 
And that allows me to do uh, keying like this and compositing in Unreal Engine at a much, much higher quality. And I've just learned how to use it um, in a more accurate way, especially with the D spill and like the edge mat. And there's a lot to live keying. I'm still learning it, but just using the color difference keyer made a huge difference, even with the transparent and the reflective objects. Uh, and this is how I test it with my llama and myself there. <laughs> so moving on from the live key and the tracking, one of the next things that I really need to get into the system uh, at an indie level is really hard still, is to encode the focus. So if I'm going to focus on the real world object, the background should go out of focus, right? And that's an Unreal Engine. And then likewise, as I focus to the background, I need to have this all tracked at the same time. The high-end tracking systems have solutions for this and they require custom hardware and they're a little pricey, but I figured out a pretty lo-fi way of using two Vive trackers to track the focus. And this is that demo. Uh, I still do not recommend going this way. It's really not reliable, but as far as learning how to program myself uh, a, a really lo-fi uh, tracker for focus, I learned a lot and it did technically work, uh, but again, in the end, I really would not recommend something like this. You can see that I'm using two follow focuses and it's quite like quite DIY, but I was still happy to learn uh, this entire process. Moving on for me, after I started to get uh, more comfortable with virtual camera and the VCam uh, with mixed reality is what I moved on to next. So uh, you can't quite see it in this one, but I'm actually in the frame with her and I'm filming it, which I'll show you in this demo. This is like, I think like one of the first ones I did that was like this. So I'm filming uh, the Countess, who is a Paragon character that you can get for free on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. And this set is also from the Marketplace. And I'm testing my handheld V camera, virtual camera, with a flashlight or spotlight also mounted to it so I could do an on-camera effect. And at this point, I had figured out how to do mixed reality. So I thought I might as well just do both at the same time. So these are both live feeds out of Unreal Engine. If you look closely, my mouse is actually still on the screen. I forgot to move my mouse <laughs> during the video capture, but that was a great test. And uh, there was a lot of response to that on the internet when I posted it, which was very encouraging to keep going. After that, I started to build uh, different controls so that I could move around and change focal length and do different things. And I essentially mapped them to an Xbox controller. And what you'll see in this demo is that I'm actually piloting and moving around the camera stage uh, with the Xbox controller to kind of find where I want to shoot from. And then I go handheld with the VCam and do what I normally do. And uh, what I really enjoy about this as a cinematographer is that I can see the reflections and I can see the different tones from the lighting while I'm filming it. And so that's really what makes this quite engaging to do. Uh, it's really fun compared to working with something that's all gray box or like your kind of standard low quality uh, OpenGL viewport. Doing this all in Unreal Engine is really fun. This is my next test as I'm continuing to uh, mix real world cameras with virtual cameras. I'm also very interested as a DP to mix real world lights with virtual lights. So you'll see that I've parented a virtual light to a real light and roughly matched uh, their lighting quality so that uh, I could potentially shoot with a real person and a virtual person and match the lighting between the two. That was what that demo was uh, about for me. Moving on to remote collaboration, uh, this is kind of getting to, I think the point of this talk is really about what can you do remotely from home with virtual production. So this is one of my first collaborations that you can see here. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, this is a virtual reality experience created by Mac in Studios. And we got connected through Epic Games, I believe, on LinkedIn. And uh, he sent me their project, their Unreal Engine project was originally uh, a virtual reality experience. And I wanted to make a cinematic with it using my new techniques and tools. And this is a demo uh, from that. So you'll see that here, uh, it's probably a little small, we'll see a bigger picture of it, is that I'm controlling the camera stage with my feet using pedals, which we'll see a picture of. Um, and then the camera itself is also motion tracked, but in this case it's on a tripod. So I'm trying to move myself around in a smooth way and do pan and tilt. So it's a little bit of a, uh, a juggle to do this. I think ideally this is really run by two people, but this is my very first remote virtual production collaboration where someone authored the scene. I actually did all the lighting uh, and changed that up. And then I'm also doing the camera work and making a little short film edit out of it now. 
And this is actually part of the McKinn's uh, competition, the real-time competition now, where other people were given the scene to do the same exact thing. Uh, so that's been a pretty exciting collaboration there, and I'm excited to see what people make uh, with these assets. So this is a picture of that hardware. Uh, I'm still continuing to iterate on hardware. So this is a farm simulator uh, hardware kit. So there's a wheel, which is great, that spins like 270 in both directions and then like self-centers. And it comes with a joystick and a lot of buttons. And most imp importantly for me are the foot pedals, which I had mapped to moving forward and back based on where the camera was looking. And it just allows me to experiment with different live control systems, which is really what I'm looking for, which I'll show you why live is so important for me. Uh, before I get into the next demo, this is the next piece of hardware that has really allowed me to work like I used to on a live action set in Unreal Engine. I can really work how I'm very familiar with working. And so I upgraded to an innovative camera cart. That's the first one so that I can move it around and potentially bring this on set uh, when, it, when that's allowed to happen. Uh, and the other piece of kit are the uh, Nodo Inertia wheels. And those are the two wheels that you'll see there. I'm using those to essentially control the pan and tilt of a camera. And they're being, uh, the rotations for the camera are actually set up like a real geared head would be in the real world. So they're slightly offset from like, just like a, what you'd say like a nodal camera move. Uh, they have real world offsets built into them, which I really appreciate. And I like the way that cameras look that way. Uh, another piece of kit that's on here is a MIDI controller and I'm mapping that to playing back mocap and mapping lights to it. And it just essentially, without even having to look, I can reach down and do things uh, to the scene without having to go back to the editor and it's all happening very quickly. And the very last piece of kit that you see here is the Atomos Sumo Monitor. It's 1080p and it's HDR, so it looks great. And I am live operating off of that monitor and I'm able to record with it as well. So for my workflows, I'm very much looking to stay in real time. I don't go back to sequencer. I'm not doing your typical VFX workflow. I hit record on the monitor. I live operate almost everything. And at the end of a session, I might have an hour or two of just ProRes footage that I go and I edit and I color grade and I move on. That's very much the type of workflow that I like to do. And I'll share uh, the very first demos of that type of workflow here. So this is a collaboration that is still going on with Super Alloy Interactive and forgive some of the messy mocap placements. This was really just testing the whole thing. This isn't the final mocap from the project we're working on. But what you can see here that is pretty final is that I have the camera head now being remotely controlled by the inertia wheels here. And I have a simple A to B keyframe system that you set up while playing or while shooting. We don't do this using sequence or anything like that. And it allows me to do uh, camera moves that I like to do like I was in the real world. So in this case, I'm kind of emulating a dolly. In the earlier ones, I was emulating a technocrime where we end up above the actors. And this combination of live camera operating while I'm watching the action happening gives like a really organic feel to this. And is again how I prefer to do camera work. I like to do these takes over and over again. I like to physically get better at performing the move live. And it allows me to move really quickly. And as you'll see in just a little bit, it allows me to work with the live director as well in a very fast, organic way. So the way that this collaboration happened was that first we came up with a little script, mostly led by Super Alloy uh, on the creative. And then we did a remote mocap session, which I don't think is anything new, but it was new for me. So we got on a Zoom call and you can see, we can see two witness cameras and I can see the XN's view of this. And we went through the shot list and we did some different uh, mocap takes of that. And I was able to kind of consult and, you know, just give my feedback uh, from kind of like a cinematography point of view, what I thought would be needed. Really, I was just kind of learning in that case. So once the mocap was, you know, first pass cleaned up, nothing uh, too crazy. Then all those mocap files were sent to me and I put them onto these two characters and I had built a system that would allow me to film it in real time using the setup you see here. So it's very much the same tools just on my desk. And what we did was actually a live Zoom call where I could film uh, with the director live. So what I'm gonna play for you now is a clip uh, from a four hour live stream that we did to YouTube where we actually went and filmed this scene together and we went through the mocap clips, picked angles, and the idea was to make this as much 
as possible to feel like a live action set. And I think there were really moments in there where this felt like doing things live and doing it completely remotely on Zoom. I'm in Boston in my basement and Super Alloy is in uh, Las Vegas in their studio. Actually, I think he's in his house in this one. And it was a it was it was a great time and I learned a lot from it and I think it was really productive actually. I think that if we had done this independently, it would have been a much different product than doing it and finding the coverage together, even remotely over Zoom. I think it was pretty successful. And rolling, and let's try it. There we go. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, that's okay. Ah, uh, you know, a little bit it's, off. It's a Wait a minute. Let him get into position. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's, I'm not sure if he lands. It was a rehearsal. I can... That's okay. Um, let's just go over the shoulder on him, and I think we can we can buy it, you know? Yeah. And uh, let's go higher up on his shoulder. Just a little bit. There we go. And then, so it's going to be the punch. And then he's going to yep. walk over then, there. There you go. And just tilt down a little bit. Yeah. There we go. Nice. That looks good. Keep it. Keep it here. Keep it here. Bang. Oh, that'll miss. But that's all right. We're going to shoot a different angle for that. And action. Pang. Yeah, cut. When you do slow-mo. Pang. See, that's beautiful. But you end the full speed, sir. Yes. <laughs> okay. And rolling and speed. That's fine. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Yep. Love this. <laughs> <laughs> <I see him. laughs> you like it. <laughs> Does that not work? You know, I'm operating, so you have a better eye on it. I'm like keeping them in the frame, so it, oh, it seems great, like it man. seems like it seems like it worked <laughs> based on your hair. I like. Am I the only one laughing out there? I might be. <laughs> So that was genuinely a good time. There were a lot of fun moments and a lot of discovery and live discovery and live collaboration there. And for me, I think that really is the future uh, and what I'm going to be working towards for me with virtual production uh, from my house. You know, I, it's harder to do green screen or LED virtual production uh, in in my studio. It's hard to get, you know, it requires, you know, real people to be on set together usually. But for something that's all an engine, that's CG, uh, I think the tools are already there in Unreal Engine and then combined with like Zoom. <laughs> so we can do uh, these type of shoots and uh, I'm getting a lot of interest from different companies to do stuff like this. And this was really our first test of it. I thought this first pass was going to be about an hour and a half, something like that. Ended up being four hours and then an additional hour session to finish up this little short film. And we're going to go back and do another pass of this. This was like, you know, kind of temporary work in progress mocap, uh, temporary set. It's not finished, but we're looking to go back and do another session. Maybe we'll live stream it with the final assets and actually make the final product. The rough cut of the film is pretty funny. Uh, I can't wait to be able to share that with everyone. So uh, what I've been working on lately is kind of cleaning up this whole process. And now I'm working with HP. Uh, so I have a Z8 there as my new workstation uh, dedicated for virtual production. And inside is the NVIDIA Quadro RTX 8000. So because my workflow is so real time, like I'm not going to sequence or nothing is rendered or comps later, I am capturing it live there. So to get the most performance out of Unreal Engine, the Z8, the Quadro 8000, that is allowing me to do ray tracing and 1080 or 4K live capture and uh, get the best quality possible. And the primary interest that I have uh, with this is to do uh, either like an animated show, something like for Netflix or uh, entirely CG music videos. And I'm, these are demos where I'm kind of testing that workflow here and showing different studios and record labels this quality that we can get really just quite affordably and simply. And in this case, I'm kind of showing off my system where I'm recording to the monitor, I'm handled with the camera, and I can switch to the wheels, all while getting this in real time. And like you saw before, I can do this live with a director or creative director, and we can do live iteration uh, and filming of these scenes like, again, we were on set. In this next demo here, uh, this is actually a demo that I'm showing as a music video, which you'll see uh, after this clip and really trying to push like what's possible with this workflow. So we see a car driving and we see this actor getting out and walking around. I'm of course filming it handheld. I'm filming it with the inertia wheels. But the, um, the thing that I'm trying to show here is that I didn't hand animate any of this stuff. This is all basically done using take recorder and sequence recorder in Unreal Engine, which I'll show in just a minute. And so this allows for really fast iteration. Like I could do lots of different takes and it allows me to film it really quickly. 
So you'll see here, I'm just controlling this car like it was Grand Theft Auto with an Xbox controller. Uh, the actor gets out, again, just like your standard video game because we're working in Unreal Engine. And I'm able to record all of this essentially as kind of like lo-fi mocap data where I wouldn't have a, a mocap volume easily accessible that would be this size. Uh, I'm able to do this just like a video game. And anything that's like a little funny, we can just essentially film around it. And so you're going to have to forgive the mocap here. I'm still testing out different uh, live mocap workflows and, you know, post editing mocap workflows here. But this is me taking that same scene and turning it into a proof of concept music video for a couple of people. So that's me in a mocap suit. Again, no hands, no fingers, uh, and a little bit stuttery. Again, that's my fault. But I think that this works really well as a proof of concept that if we picture that this was uh, for a real artist and that was the B-roll in the different locations that we could pull off a pretty compelling digital music video uh, or all virtual music video with pretty modest uh, resources and it really wouldn't take much time, uh, especially for using things like marketplace assets like I am in this case. So this is starting to wrap it up. Um, what I'm developing now on top of Cinetracer, really a lot of the tech that I uh, figure out and develop ends up in Cinetracer. But I'm also now building tools that are for Unreal Engine Editor because there's just a lot more um, power there and flexibility to import assets, etc. So I'm really working on something loosely called virtual production tools right now. And it's designed for directors and DPs to be able to work in any of these three categories of virtual production using the same framework, the same hardware, and the same set of skills. So one working in engine where it's uh, basically like a game framework like Cinetracer for previs and virtual filmmaking. That's really what we saw a lot in this presentation. Uh, virtual sets, so working on a green screen primarily. Uh, interfacing with different camera trackers because there's a lot and controlling real world lights uh, with the DMX plugin through Unreal Engine and having kind of a standard orientation of how those would be set up. I'll be showing more of that on YouTube later this year. And finally, LED walls where we can control the virtual world again using my hardware interfaces that I like to do. It's really a tool that I want if I'm going to start shooting on LED walls, uh, LED walls again as a DP. And again, interfacing with real world lighting and having uh, the interaction be somewhat automated and more fluid and less having to do really heavy R&D, just have it be more like turnkey and sort of a standard setup when it comes to LED walls and uh, real world lights. And again, a big focus is on standardizing hardware. So you'll see that this cart continues to grow. That's the Tangent Wave 2, usually used for color grading. Uh, we're working on mapping that into Unreal Engine to make the color adjustments much faster on the fly. And I'm working with camera manufacturers, lens manufacturers, lighting, grip, Hardware, software from many different industries are all coming together in Unreal Engine for virtual production for the film industry. And I'm helping to just facilitate um, communication and then also with marketing and just doing demos of it online just so people can see how it works. Because this is a very new field and there's not a lot of people producing content around it. So that wraps it up for this. Thanks so much for coming to this presentation. If you want to follow up with me, here's my handle on Twitter and on Instagram, and especially YouTube is Cinematography DB. That's where I'm posting my very long vlogs on virtual production and eventually doing tutorials and more demos of high-end software and also DIY solutions all put together. That is where I'm putting most of the content uh, regarding virtual production. So thank you so much again. See you out there.